Experimental Determination of the Speed Distribution in a Gas In this video we deal with the experimental determination of the speed distribution in a gas and show a possible experimental setup. So let's get started. As already explained in the video on Brownian motion, the temperature of a gas is a measure of the kinetic energy of the particles. However, even at a constant temperature not all the molecules in a gas have the same speed. After all, in a gas there are permanent collisions between the molecules. Some molecules are slowed down by the collision and others are accelerated. Thus, molecules with different velocities can be found in a gas. For ideal gases, the physicists James Clerk Maxwell and Ludwig Boltzmann were able to derive such a speed distribution with the help of statistical methods. Whether such a theoretically derived distribution actually applies in practice, however, must be verified in an experiment. Therefore, the question arises how the speeds of the gas molecules can be determined experimentally in order to then make a statement about the speed distribution. In the following, an experiment will be demonstrated in more detail and its result will be discussed. Experimental Setup To measure the speed of the molecules in a gas, the used substance is first evaporated in an effusion oven and heated to a constant temperature. The gas molecules can pass through a hole in the oven. Thereby, the gas molecules still move in different directions in a wide range. Therefore, with the help of two apertures, called a collimator, a sharply focused particle beam is then generated. In this gas jet, the molecules move in a common direction, but at different speeds. It is exactly these different speeds that must now be measured. Note that the speed distribution in the gas jet is representative for the whole gas, even if the apertures of the collimator have filtered out particles with different propagation directions. After all, there is no direction in which the molecules prefer to move in the gas. It is a completely random motion without a preferred direction. Therefore, the speed distribution in any direction is representative for the entire gas. The molecular beam is now directed onto a rotating drum. At the circumference of this drum, several helical grooves are milled in axial direction, analogous to the threads of screws. Only molecules whose speeds are within a certain range pass through the slotted drum at a given rotational speed. Molecules that are too fast will hit the left side of the groove. If the molecules are too slow, they will collide with the right side of the groove. The speed of interest can be controlled by varying the rotational speed of the drum. If the speed of the drum is high, only molecules with high speeds will pass through the apparatus. At a low rotational speed, however, only molecules with low speeds will pass through. This experimental setup thus serves as a velocity selector. To ensure that the gas molecules to be measured are not influenced in their speed by collisions with air particles, the entire setup must be in a vacuum. In order to obtain the distribution of the different speeds, the respective number of particles passing through the velocity selector must be determined. This is achieved with a particle detector that measures the frequency of impact. Note, due to the finite size of the width of the groove, the speed of the molecules passing through the velocity selector may vary within certain limits. Therefore, it is not possible to measure the exact speeds of the gas molecules, but only to analyze speed ranges. However, this is quite sufficient for the representation of a speed distribution, as will be shown later. Evaluation A gas usually contains innumerable particles. To better illustrate the speed distribution, we will therefore assume a number of 1,000 gas molecules in the following. The speed intervals to be investigated are 500 meters per second each. In this case, the following statistical distribution could typically result. 68 particles would have a speed in the range between 0 and 500 meters per second. 309 particles would be in the speed range between 500 and 1000 meters per second. 358 particles would be measured in the interval between 1000 and 1500 meters per second. 195 particles would have a speed in the interval between 1500 and 2000 meters per second. 59 particles would be in the speed range between 2000 and 2500 meters per second. 10 particles would have a speed in the range between 2500 and 300 meters per second. One particle would show a speed greater than 3000 meters per second. 
The given diagram of the frequency distribution is also called a histogram. In such a histogram, the height of a bar represents the number of molecules whose speeds lie within the respective width of the bar. Although such a histogram shows the speed distribution very clearly, it lacks a generalization to any speed intervals. For example, it is not possible to determine the number of molecules in the speed range between 1300 and 1600 meters per second. Therefore, based on the histogram, another form of representation is used. We will discuss this in more detail in the following. Distribution of the frequency density. For a more general representation of the speed distribution, it must first be noted that it is in principle impossible to directly assign a specific number of molecules to a certain speed. This is because the observed speed of a molecule will never correspond to a given value up to the last decimal place. After all, you would not find a single molecule that exactly has this given speed. Even on the basis of the experimental setup, it is not possible to draw conclusions about the exact speed of the gas molecules anyway, but only about speed ranges. This is due to the finite width of the grooves, which allows the speed to vary within certain limits. For a more detailed analysis of the speed distribution, one could reduce the width of the grooves in the rotating drum. Thus, one would also reduce the speed range to be filtered. This then gives a more detailed picture of how many molecules are moving in a given speed range. The histogram shows the speed distribution for smaller speed intervals of 250 and 125 meters per second. The smaller the chosen speed interval, the lower the heights of the individual bars, since the molecules are distributed over smaller and smaller speed ranges. For very small speed intervals, there is a proportional relationship between the chosen interval width delta v and the number of molecules n contained in a given speed range. This also becomes evident because if the interval is halved, the molecules assigned to this interval will now also split up in half. For example, with an interval width of 500 meters per second, a total of 358 molecules are found in the speed range between 1000 and 1500 meters per second. If the interval is halved to 250 meters per second, about half of the molecules, 192 molecules to be exact, will now be found in the range between 1000 and 1250 meters per second. If the interval is halved again to 125 meters per second, the original number of molecules will be halved again, so that 97 particles will now be found in the speed range between 1000 and 1125 meters per second. Thus, the height of the original bar decreases by half with each time the speed interval is halved because, on statistical average, when the interval is halved, half of the molecules have a higher speed and the other half have a lower speed. Note that, strictly speaking, this proportionality applies only to infinitely small intervals. For a more general representation of the speed distribution one can now use exactly this fact that speed interval and the number of molecules in it are proportional to each other. This is because the quotient of the number of molecules and the speed interval is then constant and no longer dependent on the chosen speed interval itself. This quantity is also called frequency density. The frequency density thus describes the number of molecules per unit interval width. The histogram shows the effects of an ever smaller interval width on the distribution of the frequency density. It can be seen that for small interval widths the diagrams become smoother and smoother. For an infinitely small interval width, one finally obtains a continuous curve, which is independent of the interval width. With such a distribution of the frequency density, the height of the graph no longer corresponds to the number of molecules, but the area under the curve. If, for example, the area results in a value of 185 in the speed range between 1300 and 1600 meters per second, this means that 185 out of the 1000 molecules considered have a speed in the range between 1300 and 1600 meters per second. The area below the entire curve in the speed range between 0 and infinity would correspond to 1000 molecules, since all the particles would be recorded within this speed range. The shown distribution of the frequency density is valid in this form only for a total number of 1000 molecules. However, the curve would be similar in principle also for 1 million molecules, it would only be stretched in height. Thus, for a general representation of the speed distribution it is not very practicable to relate it to a concrete number of molecules. 
Rather, the frequency distribution is given as a percentage in order to be independent of the total number of molecules. One speaks then no longer of the absolute frequency distribution but of the relative frequency distribution. The quantity on the vertical axis is finally called relative frequency density. In such a diagram, the area under the curve corresponds to the percentage of molecules in the respective speed range. In the present case, this would be 18.5% of the molecules, which have a speed between 1300 and 1600 meters per second. The area below the entire curve in the speed range between zero and infinity would correspond to one, since all the particles would be recorded within this speed range. Influence of temperature on the speed distribution. The figure shows the speed distribution at a temperature of 273 Kelvin, using helium as an example. With increasing temperature, however, the maximum of the speed distribution shifts to higher temperatures. The distribution is stretched in length and squeezed in height. Note that in all cases the area under the curve is normalized to the value 1 and the curves consequently become flatter with a wider distribution. This fact is consistent with the statement already made in the video on Brownian motion that the temperature of a substance is a measure of the mean kinetic energy of the molecules. In the video on the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution, this is also shown mathematically. The physicists James Clerk Maxwell and Ludwig Boltzmann attempted to derive such a speed distribution on the basis of the kinetic theory of gases using statistical methods. In 1860, the two physicists finally succeeded. Therefore, such a speed distribution is also called Maxwell-Boltzmann speed distribution. We go into this in more detail in the linked video. We hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. Thanks for watching.